Hello everyone, uh, welcome to part 9 of this series. As you all know, uh, the explanation will be given inside our discussion box and detailed explanation will be given inside our telegram channel. So, let's move to question number 161. Which of the following muscle is primarily responsible for plantar flexion of the angle joint? Option A, tibialis anterior. Option B, gastronomus. Option C, soleus. Option D, peroneus longus. And the answer is... Option B, gastronomus. Uh, I would like to clarify that. Option C, soleus is also the correct answer. Uh, in an MCQ exam, point of view, we need to choose one answer. So, we chose uh, the correct answer will be gastronomus. Let's move to question number 162. What is the primary mechanism of injury in an anterior cruciate ligament trio? Option A, direct trauma to the knee. Option B, excessive knee extension. Option C, non-contact deceleration with a planted foot. Option D, hyperflexion of the knee joint. And the answer is, Option C, non-contact deceleration with planted foot. Let's plant our flexed foot. Now let's move to question number 163. Which of the following exercises is recommended for strengthening the rotator cuff muscles? Option A. Dumbbell bench press. Option B. Seated cable row. Option C. Lateral raises. Option D. External rotation with resistance band. And the answer is... Option D. External rotation with resistance band. Now let's move to question number 164. What is the primary function of biceps femoris muscle? Option A, hip flexion. Option B, knee extension. Option C, hip extension and knee flexion. Option D, knee internal rotation. And the answer is... Option C, hip extension and knee flexion. Now let's move to question number 165. Which of the following muscle is primarily responsible for internal rotation of the shoulder joint? Option A, infraspinatus. Option B, subscapularis. Option C, T is minor. Option D, pectoralis major. And the answer is... Option B, subscapularis. Now let's move to question number 166. What is the recommended initial treatment for a grade 2 moderate angle spray? Option A, immobilization and weight bearing as tolerated. Option B, rise, rest, ice, compression, elevation and non-weight bearing. Option C, immediate surgical intervention. Option D, aggressive rehabilitation exercises. And the answer is... Option B, rise and non-weight bearing. Now let's move to question number 167. Which of the following exercise is recommended for improving dynamic stability and proprioception in athletes? Option A. Seated dumbbell curls. Option B. Single leg squat on BOSU ball. Option C. Leg press machine. Option D. Bench press. And the answer is... Option B. Single leg squat on BOSU ball. Now let's move to question number 168. What is the primary mechanism of injury in hamstring strain? Option A. Eccentric overload during sprinting or kicking. Option B. Diet trauma to posterior thigh. Option C. Excessive knee flexion with hip extension. Option D. Repetitive overuse without proper recovery. And the answer is... Option A. Eccentric overload during sprinting or kicking. Now let's move to question number 169. Which of the following condition is characterized by the pain and tenderness around the lateral epicondyle of the elbow? Option A. Biceps tendinitis. Option B. Rotator cuff impingement. Option C. Tennis elbow. That's lateral epicondylitis. Option D. Patella tendinopathy. And the answer is... Option C. Tennis elbow. Now let's move to question number 170. What is the recommended treatment for a grade 3 that's complete tear of medial collateral ligament that's MCL of the knee? Option A. Immobilization and non-weight bearing. Option B. Rise and weight bearing as tolerated. Option C. Surgical repair followed by rehabilitation. Option D. Aggressive rehabilitation exercises without surgical intervention. And the answer is... Option C. Surgical repair followed by rehabilitation. Now let's move to question number 171. Which of the following exercises is recommended for improving core stability and trunk control in athletes? Option A. Biceps curl. Option B. Leg extension. Option C. Plank. Option D. Seated cable rows. And the answer is... Option C. Planks. Now let's move to question number 172. What is the primary mechanism of injury in a groin strain? Option A. Direct trauma to the groin area. Option B. Excessive hip abduction and external rotation. 
ऑप्शन सी सडन एक्सलेशन और चेज ऑफ डायरेक्शन विथ अडक्टर एक्सेंड्रिक ओवरलोड ऑप्शन डी रिपीटेटिव ओवर यूस विदउट प्रोपर रिकवरी एंड आंसर ईज ऑप्शन सी सडन एक्सलेशन और चेज ऑफ डायरेक्शन विथ अडक्टर एक्सेंड्रिक ओवरलोड Now let's move to question number 173. Which of the following condition is characterized by the pain and tenderness around the inferior pole of the patella? Option A, patellar tendinopathy. Option B, iliotibial band syndrome. Option C, Oscott Shelter disease. Option D, chondromalacia patellae. And the answer is Option A, patellar tendinopathy. Now let's move to question number 174. Which of the following muscle is primarily responsible for external rotation of the hip joint? Option A gluteus medius, option B gluteus maximus, option C piriformis, option D iliopsoas. And the answer is option C piriformis. Now let's move to question number 175. What is the recommended treatment for a complete rupture of Achilles tendon? Option A immobilization and non weight bearing. Option B aggressive rehabilitation exercises option C surgical repair followed by rehabilitation option D rise and weight bearing as tolerated and the answer is option C surgical repair followed by rehabilitation now let's move to question number 176 which of the following exercise is recommended for improving proprioception and balance in athlete option A seated dumbbell press option B leg press machine Option C single leg balance board exercise on bosu board option D barbell squats and the answer is option C single leg balance exercise on bosu ball now let's move to question number 177 what is the primary mechanism of injury in rotator cuff tear option A direct trauma to the shoulder option B repetitive overhead activity with impingement option C sudden deceleration with eccentric overload Option D excessive external rotation of the shoulder and the answer is Option B repetitive overhead activities with impingement Now let's move to question number 178 which of the following condition is characterized by the pain and tenderness around the medial epicondyle of the elbow Option A golfer's elbow option B tennis elbow option C biceps tendonitis option D rotator cuff impingement and the answer is Option A golfer's elbow Now let's move to question number 179 Which of the following muscle is primarily responsible for internal rotation of the hip joint Option A gluteus medius Option B gluteus minimus Option C tensor fasciae lata Option D iliopsoas and the answer is Option B gluteus minimus Now let's move to question number 180 What is the recommended treatment for grade 2 moderate pain of the acromioclavicular AC joint that's acromioclavicular joint Option A immobilization and non weight bearing Option B rise protocol and activity modification Option C immediate surgical intervention Option D aggressive rehabilitation exercises and the answer is Option B rise and activity modifications So that's all for today. If you have any doubts, please do mention in the comment box. Please don't forget to read the description box to learn more. And see you in the next part. That's part ten. Till then, bye bye. See you.